history and clinical examination outline introduction icu flow sheet the system oriented examination introduction in general icu patients not only are very ill but also may have disease processes that involve a number of different organ systems therefore the approach to the critically ill patient needs to be systematic and complete an organized and efficient history and physical examination should be conducted for all patients entering the icu and a series of priorities for therapeutic interventions should be established icu flow sheet the flow sheet is the repository of information necessary for the recognition and management of severe physiological derangements in critically ill patients a well organized flow sheet provides around the clock information regarding the different organ systems rather than just vital signs alone major categories appropriate for an icu flow sheet include vital signs neurological status hemodynamic parameters ventilator settings respiratory parameters inputs and outputs laboratory data medications the system oriented examination identification provide name age major diagnosis day of entry to the hospital and day of admission to the icu major events over the last 24 hours for example major thoracic surgery or cardiopulmonary arrest computed tomography ct scan of the head reintubation or changes in mechanical ventilation system review neurologic mental status is the patient awake what is the glasgow comma scale score what are the results of any neurological evaluation in the past 24 hours such as a lumbar puncture or ct scan cardiovascular symptoms and physical findings review electrocardiogram ecg check the cvp hemodynamics note the blood pressure bp and pulse variability over the past 24 hours review echocardiogram respiratory current ventilator settings need to be charted recent arterial blood gases abgs should be compared with previous measurements symptoms and physical findings should be noted chest x-ray is obtained in all intubated patients daily renal or metabolic urine output is quantified per hour daily weights are to be monitored electrolytes are noted the abgs are used for acid base balance interpretation gastrointestinal abdominal examination to done the characteristics of the gastric contents or stool should be examined abdominal x-rays must be reviewed liver function tests are analyzed infectious diseases temperature curve is to be observed the total white blood cell count wbc is recorded cultures culture of blood sputum urine etc to be done current antibiotics are to be reported hematology complete blood cell count cbc to be done and reviewed coagulation parameters should be addressed when pertinent nutrition total parenteral nutrition tpn 
need to state what kind of formula the patient is receiving, the total caloric intake provided by TPN with the percentage of fat and carbohydrates given. Enteral feedings. These are reported similar to TPN with mention of any gastrointestinal intolerance, example diarrhea. Endocrine. Special attention is paid to pancreatic, adrenal and thyroid function. It is must to include the glycemic variation that the patient has over the past 24 hours. The type of insulin preparation being used should be specified. In patients with hyperosmolal states and diabetic cataacidosis, it is necessary to determine calculated and measured serum osmolality as well as ketones. Psychosocial For drug overdoses and patients with depression, specific questions need to be asked regarding the potential of new suicidal or homicidal ideation. Other Check the endotracheal tube size and position. Check all lines with their corresponding equipments. All medications and continuous infusions and their proper concentrations and infusion rates must be known and recorded. At the end of rounds every morning, it is important to keep a list of the things that need to be done that day. For example, changes in central venous lines or arterial lines, performing a lumbar puncture, etc.